Right. Additionally, the Presidential Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms Committee has proposed a 5% reduction in the country's corporate income tax rate. The aim is to improve the ease of doing business and attract more domestic and foreign direct investment in Nigeria. I am now being joined by international finance and economic analyst Mukhtar Mohammed to look at all of these developing issues. Thanks for joining us, Mukhtar. Mukhtar, are you with us? All right, uh, we'll see if we can connect with Mukhtar. We have to look at this labor issue because already we are beginning to see the impact. But, um, news just breaking in that organized labor has shut down um, TCN. Mukhtar, thanks for staying with us on uh, Business Insights. Thank you. Can I hear you? All right, let's just talk. Let me just get your your overview concerning what is going on right now in the country. What is your stance on the minimum wage uh, issue following the recent discussions with the National Assembly and the SGF? Do you believe that resorting to industrial action is the most effective course of action and what are the potential economic repercussions of this really? Because as it is right now from news we are getting this morning, TCN is shutting that there is a blackout as it were. So let's just get your candid opinion. Justin, as my candid opinion is, um, I think at this time, the government never showed any seriousness in negotiating with labor. Uh, we have to call it spill a spill. If you made a pronouncement that subsidy was gone since May 29, and up to today, one year after, you've not been able to come up with a national minimum wage, knowing fully well what those, those statements have done to the economy, that shows that uh, we are a government that does not listen and does not have the heart for the people. Because economic, you, you see the data from Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, food inflation has gone up by over 40%. That is through the National Bureau of Statistics. You and I know that if you go to the market, it's, it's above that. But you seem not to be worried uh, about what is happening. And then you try to use the blackmail of the judiciary, try to go about labor's not being patient. I don't, for me, I think the what God, labor have done seems to be the best thing. You can wake up in the morning, grant approval for uh, Nigeria Electricity Regulation Commission to improve tariff by 200%. But yes, it's taking forever to come up with a national minimum wage. It's psychophancy, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. The government seems not to be interested in the welfare of the Nigerian people. Uh, its impact on the economy, you just said it. The national grid is shut down. It got shut down last night, I think, at about 2 to, 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 to 19, 220, the national grid was shut down. So you could imagine the kind of effect it has in the power sector. Even if that sector is one of the demands that the labor are, are really saying that the tariff must revert back. And that was for one, then we will see effect in the aviation sector. Uh, so tomorrow, the aviation sector will shut down the international airspace. They can only accommodate flights that will come in today and tomorrow. And local flights are going to be shut down because the Egyptian Union also are going to join that strike. So um, schools are shut down, uh, public schools especially. Um, private schools are now um, forced to tell their children to 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 do online um, classes from home because mm -hmm. of the security challenge that comes with them um, with the strike. Also, so yeah. is 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 it's, if the government does not address this issue in the next 24 hours. Um, it, it could go to an area that you have to look at the national security because um, the average Nigerians are not smiling and they are the majority. Mm. All right, before we talk about uh, what uh, constitutes a real uh, living wage, let's still talk about, uh, let's talk um, economics really. For instance, now, what does it really cost us to, you know, to be off work as it is on a daily, uh, as in on a, on a daily uh, cost? So how much would it cost Nigeria if uh, labor is to go on strike uh, maybe for some days? Okay, last time we had it cost about six trillion. And mm. So, and you're thinking about the total shutdown now. The no pen pengesin said so they will they will also join the strike. And we don't know when they will join. That's the life wire of the Nigerian economy. Mm. And today, what we are seeing the power sector, the power sector is supposed to be the life wire of the indigenous, I mean, is the, um, the of the local economy. That is the, 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 the SME, which control about 80% of the Nigerian space. Um, you just go town, go out of town today, you see a lot of um, 
um, um, businesses. You see a lot of people going around with their tech to fill stations to get fuel to power their generators. Uh, this must have been something they, they never planned for. That also is increasing the cost of doing business. So you can't quantify in terms of numbers until after the strike, mm. then you begin to look at the number. But where I'm sitting now, we are looking at almost um, almost six trillion in right. terms of uh, when you talk about turnover of businesses that will be affected if mm. this strike continues to the following day. Like I just told you, mm. um, the oil and gas sector have not joined the strike yet. Um, they are waiting. Um, the power sector, I'm, I'm shocked that the power sector was the, one of the first people to join the strike. That yes. shows you the, 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 the grievances in the land because um, I stand to be corrected. Uh, this is the first time that we are having a power sector that is shut down in terms of a labor strike. Normally, we get them threatened to be shut down. Mm. But after two or three days, you see those issues have been resolved. Mm. Even where we had the, the fuel remover crisis of good luck in Billy Jonathan, which, which happened sometime when everybody was... Uh, I mean, the, the power sector was not completely shut down. But today, we are seeing a complete shutdown what? of the power sector. That tells you that um, the, the, the people are not happy. and. They, they, they feel that the government is not serious for them to have gotten right. this far in doing what they have done now. Okay, Mukta, um, I have previously inquired, and I will emphasize once more, what exactly constitutes a fair wage or a living wage, especially considering the federal government's estimation that meeting labor's demands would result in a cost of approximately 9.5 trillion naira? So what should we really be looking at that will be a bit fair or maybe meeting some uh, middle ground or something? Uh, I think for me, I don't think um, labor demands of about um, now 495,000 is realistic. But again, it all depends on what you are coming to the table with and why you are, what you are able to address. Now, um, in a real economy, in global, global best practices in the economy is um, when you have a minimum wage, um, you increase your minimum wage by and by inflation. Now, if you look at inflation at 33.6, 33%, you would have said the 33% increment could be realistic. But again, when you look at food inflation at 40 something percent, that's just food inflation. You are not talking about housing, you are not talking about uh, uh, um, transportation. Just this morning, um, transport fare, Lagos State Government is saying that they are withdrawing their 25% rebate on transport fare um, using the bus rapid system, the BRT. And so you, you see that, that that has increased the cost of transportation already. Mm. So, but, uh, uh, but again, it, I think labor um, at 5495 might not be realistic. I mean, 497. But I think what constitutes a medium wage should be over a hundred thousand for me at the standard even that over a hundred thousand when you look at the exchange rate at one thousand five hundred um, naira averagely that means you are just paying the nigerian worker just 150 dollars mm. i mean about 100 dollars which is still a far cry uh, from the uh, uh, international uh, um, um, speed you are looking at so okay. but i think uh, because gov you know, government keeps saying they, they i've never seen a government that have come and said that they have the, the, the resources to meet up labor's demand a government that do not have the resources to meet up labor demand is a government that is putting on about uh, 90 billion in terms of harsh operation to for people to go to the holy land i mean then you, you see the, and then you see uh, um, and this and workers, they see what some of these political appointees um, 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 collect in terms of allowances, in terms of salaries, mm. and they, they are all the, in the thick of the action. So they see all these things, and that's why I think they are insisting that look, if you're able to cut up wish in the Nigerian store, you'll be able to give us okay. a living wage. And I mm. think I actually believe that also mm. that if government is able to do the right thing, maybe not for, for 497,000. But again, I think they could come to a very, very good uh, living wage for the average Nigeria. A situation whereby government seems to be so, so, um, so, so determined to come up with, uh, first of all, 48,000. Let down, you came up with uh, 50. It, it just shows a lack of seriousness, a lack of mm. data, because the Nigerian Labor Congress said, okay, you want us to collect 60,000. What are the years tick? What are your market variables? The Labor Congress seems to have done more better work than the government. Mm. The government just seems to be throwing numbers. It's just yesterday that the minister is telling us that it will cost about uh, 9 point something trillion to meet up labor demand. 
break it down and let us see how much is this. They, right. they just seem to just throw numbers around. Okay, before we leave uh, the labor issue, the minimum wage and discuss on um, taxation, let's just uh, get your candid opinion. Uh, the Minister of Finance, coordinating Minister of um, Economy, Wale Edo, has suggested that uh, this issue of minimum wage should actually be addressed uh, before five years, so not really uh, have this uh, debacle that we usually have. What, what are your thoughts? You said stakeholders shouldn't wait for five years to settle minimum wage. Are you in agreement well, with that? Well, it depends. The, winning, the, win, the minimum wage bill that was signed into law said that um, every five years there should be a review of the minimum wage. And so if they are saying that that should be done before then, that is good. But that means they will have to go back to the National Assembly to get that done. But I think um, um, normally it's supposed to be every five years. And uh, as it stands now, I think they've not done that review for mm. over five years. So it could be what is happening, maybe the backlog of those reviews. And the current economic times, which were which were actually caused by two very critical policy decisions that were taken by this administration, mm. move out of subsidy and the floating of the Naira. So they have to be at the cost. All right. Okay, let's shift our focus away from uh, you know, minimum wage and labor matters to taxation. The presidential committee recently held a meeting where they proposed uh, a reduction uh, in CIT to, uh, by about 5%, and they also talked about expanding the tax and bracket. A school of thought would say that uh, this administration has been so fixated on taxing the people uh, so much. But what are your personal opinions on this proposal and uh, the outcome of the meeting that w uh, was held last week? I think um, the tax, um, this um, tax committee seems to be one of the best in terms of when you see when they talk, and they seem to come up with the right policy. But again, uh, it's a tax uh, advisory committee, and now it's not left for the government to implement. I think most of their recommendations are top notch. We must give it to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were the ones that say they don't think they believe that um, uh, custom duty should be fixed at 800. Because they feel that the naira is actually on on, uh, on the value, they are the ones that are looking at um, instead of um, reducing tax on SMEs, they are the ones that are saying there is too much taxation. They even gave us the number about 200 and something uh, taxation that businesses pay, and I think they are growing with time or what is obtained globally. Because like I keep saying, um, government in Africa and especially Nigeria now at this current administration always see tax as a waste of revenue. But if you look at the policy that has been driven by this tax um, committee, you see that they are beginning to look at tax as a means to grow the economy, and which is a key driver. You, you see them talking about incentive, talking about reduction that will attract um, the global players, that will reduce the exit of um, businesses from Nigeria. So I think this is the only committee for now that I seem, seems to have the solution to Nigerian economic uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, Prices, but unfortunately, they are an advisory committee, and they they will just have to advise the government and wait for the government. By the time they go with their report, the government will set up a committee to look at it, white paper report. So, it's uh, and this government has proven to be a very slow government in terms of right. responding to the needs of Nigeria. And the only fastest response we've gotten from this mm -hmm. current government is as a regard of the change of the national anthem that was done rapidly. Outside of that, everything seems to move in a snail right. speed. Okay, uh, Mokta, I was just trying to see if we can just, uh, you know, gain more ground so we can wrap up. Now, the Minister of Finance, uh, who is still uh, in the news for, I mean, for over the weekend, uh, he, uh, he has given some sort of reassurance to the Nigerian populace that food prices will actually uh, decrease in the upcoming months. Mokta, been, it's been very hard to buy Gary or even buy Ugo at the market. But he has expressed optimism that the combination of dry and wet season harvest will lead to a reduction in foods inflation. Do you hold a similar viewpoint? Well, I don't hold it uh, because, again, when you look at what has really driven driven food uh, insecurity or food price rising, um, insecurity is part of it, especially in the northeast, north central where some of this table food comes from. So definitely that has not been achieved. Completely, there's still soft targets by the terrorists and the bandits. And that is one there. We, Nigeria is not a, a country that um, um, do all round dry season and wet season farming. So I don't know where he got his information <laughs> from, whereby during the dry and wet season, we are going to have food come down. We are not that, we've not got into that state because government have not um, 
invested so much in infrastructure. And again, the same minister said that he thinks that if they are able to address inflationary pressure, um, exchange rate will be stable. I think that for me is that shows that the government is not in tune with what is happening. Mm. what is causing inflation or what is happening in Nigeria. It should be the other way. If, right. you, stabilize if you stabilize exchange rate, mm. inflation will naturally go down. down. Yes. Because most of what we consume, even most of what drive the local consumptions, are gotten outside the shore of this country in terms of the equipment, the machineries, yeah. and other things. So stabilize exchange rate. Get to uh, see what has happened in other countries, what has happened in Ghana, what has happened in 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 in, uh, in uh, uh, um, Kenya. Yeah. All they need to do was the government to take bites of their their, their tariff rate to of household item that right. they know most Kenyans need at their home. And today their inflation from a height of about twenty five percent is moving towards a single digit. But even if now they are in twelve percent, okay. we must be be, be 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 able to know where this. So they, I am happy that he said then. Uh, um, interest rate and that has made cost of business and everything gone high. Thank God he knows that, and and that is not even bringing down inflation. The mm -hmm. only reason why he's, he's happy that the month-to-month -month inflation has come down, he has forgotten that that actually happened because the exchange rate actually went down at a point yeah, from a high of 1,900 to about um, 1,100, 1,200. Yes. That was what brought down that little month-to-month uh, -month month inflation, inflation. All right, uh, no uh, uh, reduction that is saw. So right. I think the government needs to sit up and really know what the challenges are, not trying to chase shadow instead of chasing right. the real thing. Thank you so much, uh, Mukta Mohammed, for your time and, of course, um, the insights that you have provided. Mukta Mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst. Many thanks for being with us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, and that's the size of our show. I am Justin Akadonyi. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.